there are three ingredients in McDonald's fries in the UK. How many in the US? 19 ingredients. These include a silicone used to make silly putty. In this video, you'll learn what the used chemicals are and whether you're paying for them with more than your money. If you're new here, my name is Sir Med and I'm a doctor working in Northwest London. I make videos about health. If that's something you're into, hit the subscribe button so you can stay informed. Before we dig into those chemicals, I want to give a note about food additives in general. Why should you care about them? Well, Professor Ben Metham said in 2011 that the average person in an industrialized country consumes between seven and eight kilos of food additives per year. That is the weight of your microwave. Well, I mean, the FDA have approved them, the FSA, the EFSA, they've all said that they're okay. So it must be fine for me to have, who cares? That's exactly what I thought when I first started, but then I took a deep dive into some of these chemicals to try and find the evidence and there were no human trials assessing them. These agencies use mainly mouse models to test whether a chemical is safe for use or not. Now, I love eating leftover food, but I'm not an 85 kilo mouse or rat and neither are any of you we metabolize drugs differently we live longer so you can't assume that we'll have the same response as they do that is why when a new drug is tested it goes through multiple phases of clinical trials after animal testing that includes observation even after the medication has been licensed. And there have been a few medications that have found serious side effects in humans, even after going through years of clinical trials. And those include thalidomide and rofecoxib. But Stevens et al. in 2006 showed that even in earlier phases of the trial, 20% of drugs fail once they move from being tested on animals to being tested on humans because of the, the new side effects. But these agencies are saying that these food additives are safe without them ever being tested on humans. There may be some justification for this, and that is the safe limits, which basically are set at 100 times below what the toxic concentration is for animals to try and give a buffer just in case they do make a mistake. And the other thing, Pro Professor Thomas Harding said in 2009 that there's a principle called excess pharmacology. And that basically means that because these additives aren't designed to have an effect on humans, then they are actually less likely to do so. That being said, there were still food additives, including lead, and copper, which were thought to be perfectly safe, which are obviously highly toxic and, and now banned. Without human evidence, follow-up or study repeats, how do we know that there isn't another one of these food additives hiding in the approved list? For this reason, I'm actually sending a freedom of information request to the Food Standards Agency in the UK uh, to try and figure out if they really can approve an additive without human evidence. In the EU and the UK, the list of approved additives is 319 chemicals long, but in the US, that list is actually 3,900 chemicals. So which of these have actually found themselves into the US McDonald's fries and why? Well, the first on that list is E900, which is <clears throat> Brace yourself. Polydimethyl siloxane. This is a type of silicone which is used in skincare products, shampoos, lubricants, and silly putty. McDonald's say that they put it inside their oil to stop uh, oil splashes from happening and injuring their workers. 
Clearly, they must care more about the US workers in that case than the UK or EU ones because it's not put into the oil here. And last time I heard, there are not hordes of McDonald's staff coming to hospital with splash injuries. This additive is unlikely to be dangerous as it's so sticky that the bowel can't even absorb it, so it just comes slippy slidey out in the poop. So the next additive is E339 or sodium acid pyrophosphate. So this is a type of leavening agent which gives the fries their golden color. It stops them from turning gray after they've been frozen and before they've been cooked. It also is useful for reducing a chemical called acrylamide that occurs in fries. If you don't know what acrylamide is, then oh, you're in for a treat. It's a probable carcinogen and potent neurotoxin, which occurs in fries when you cook them at over 120 degrees Celsius. And that means baking or frying. Prolonged use, even at small doses, can cause tingling of the hands of the feet, pins and needles, and, and ultimately loss of power and muscle. Uh, we know that it interacts with the DNA, with the genetic material in the cells, and because of what we know about acrylamide, it's probable that it could also cause cancer in people. The levels of acrylamide that are present in our diet are higher than we would be comfortable with. We would prefer them to be lower. So this is present in, a, in both UK and US French fries, but actually in lower quantities in the US because they have this sodium acid pyrophosphate, E339. But the phosphate inside E339 can cause problems if you have kidney disease and are unable to regulate your phosphate levels. The last of our chemicals is called TBHQ, which I'm not even gonna to attempt to pronounce. Um, it's a preservative that delays the oxidation of food. Um, after being consumed, 85% of it is actually excreted um, within four days but the rest of it can stay within the body and it's known to have some chemoprotective and some carcinogenic uh, effects. So Reni et al in 2007 actually showed that increases the risk of esophageal and stomach cancer in animals. It hasn't been reproduced in humans so there is no convincing evidence that, that this could be the case. I'm sad to say that Based on that, clearly, these golden goodies are harmful to your health anywhere. That's even before checking the macros. So even though McDonald's fries have fewer ingredients, uh, the general feeling on this tiny island from me is disappointment. And for once, it's not at the weather. <laughs> But I thought I was educated and it was only until I dug into McDonald's fries that I discovered that there was a neurotoxin hiding there. Share this video with as many people as you can so we can help other people make better choices on what they eat. I'll be making another video as soon as I get a response from the FSA. So subscribe to catch it. Summit here wishing you health and happiness and I'll see you next week. I'm actually recording this on Mother's Day. So mum, if you're watching this, I love you. And to all mums out there, thank you for sacrificing an immeasurable amount of time, energy, love, uh, to give to us and bring us into this world. We appreciate it. Take care.